hi and welcome back to my channel so today is a very very special video for me because I've wanted to do this for so freaking long and I finally got around to it I don't know I've just been there's just been so many different things coming out and I've I, you know obviously reviewing things is kind of like the priority to growing your channel so I've been trying to do as much of that as possible but this is a video that I've wanted to do for so long because I actually do wedding makeup all the time and um, I think it's very important for people who can't afford to book us to still have access to the same techniques and the same products and things of that sort. This video is going to be on this makeup look right here. So I've pulled bits and pieces of every single wedding that I've done and this is kind of like the look that I created to showcase the most requested makeup look of all time. Um, it's very flawless, it's very effortless, it's very still feminine and just makes you look like you but a better version of you and more pulled together and it's gonna make you feel very confident, very beautiful and it's gonna last for the whole night, for the whole day, through the hugs, through the sweat, through the tears, through all of that. I work in Florida so this is what I do. I have to make sure that all the makeup stays throughout everything that it could possibly go through. This is definitely a high-end, long-lasting wedding makeup tutorial. So if you would like to see how I got this makeup look, what products I use, and the tips and tricks and techniques that I have, then go ahead and keep watching. Hi, how are you? So since uh, today is a bridal thing, I uh, figured that a mimosa was uh, necessary. And I'm also filming this on a Monday, so cheers. When a client first hits my chair, usually what I will do is I will wipe any excess down with a rose water kind of toner thing. I want to just get all the excess oils off and anything that is on the face. Um, usually they will already have moisturized, but if they haven't, then I will apply some kind of moisturizer depending on what their skin is. Today I'll be using the Tatcha Water Cream. This is just what I use on myself. So for primers, I usually go in with one of two depending on what their skin is and sometimes I even combine them two. I like to ask them what their skin is like before I start the makeup. If they are dry, I will go in with the Marc Jacobs uh, Coconut Invisible Undercover Perfecting Primer. That's such a freaking mouthful. Why do they name it something like that? If they are kind of on a bigger pore, a little bit of more oily realm, I'll go in with like a pore filling. Um, which I like the Tatcha for this, or the No Pore Blum Primer, um, which is this. So it just depends on what they need. Today, on myself, I'll be using the Touch and Soul No Pore Blum. So I will go ahead and apply this. Now, I think not skipping any steps when it comes to bridal makeup is key. I want to prime, I want to put the foundation down, I want to set it, and I want to makeup spray set it. Those are all very, very essential when it comes to making sure that the foundation stays on all day through everything and all night through everything. While all of this is kind of sitting in my face, I then go on and move on to eyes. For this step, I kind of balance between the two. I'll use either use the Tarte Shape Tape or the Soft Ogre Pro Longwear MAC Paint Pod to prime their eyes before I start working on their eyeshadow. So today on myself, I will be using the Tarte Shape Tape. I'm gonna do a couple dots on the eyes and I will use a beauty sponge to blend this shit out. And I use something that's colored just to block out anything that's on the eyes because I am gonna go in with colors that are very light and natural and I need the eyelid to be blocked out from any kind of discoloration. And then I'm gonna take a setting powder. This is the um, Cover FX Matte Setting Powder and I'm just gonna fluff this all over my eyelids just to set this down so that my shadows when I go on top don't skip around. For most brides, I'll go into my Z palette. Um, this mainly consists of uh, Makeup Geek eyeshadows and MAC eyeshadows. Um, my most two used shades are these two, and this is Creme Brulee and Frappe by Makeup Geek. These are the two that I start with. I'll go in with the lighter shade, and I'll go ahead and fluff this in the crease. I want to just kind of build up the definition in the eye just to make sure that um, it opens up their eyes and kind of defines it a little bit. The eye will generally depend on what the bride wants. I usually have a bride bring in some kind of picture of the look that she wants. 
they generally all stay within the natural kind of warm tones and uh, I don't like to stray away from that because like I said I want the bride to look like herself and um, I want her to feel comfortable in what she's wearing but also feel like she's very done up and very like pulled together then I'm gonna jump into the darker shade and I'm gonna further define this crease um, I keep things very nice and simple I'm not doing any kind of big cut creases um, I'm not doing anything super sparkly unless they obviously requested but I honestly don't really get that many requests for that some brides want completely matte. Um, some brides come in and they are like, I wear no makeup and I don't know what I want. So then we'll kind of fumble around. And that's what a pre-trial is really honestly all about. It just gives you the time to discuss what they want, what is a possibility. Um, sometimes they'll bring in a picture and you have to make sure that you tell them like, look, listen, this is not a very realistic picture. This is not going to look that way on you. And I will do this and I will show you what this looks like on you. Obviously, we can come to a conclusion and adjust it as we see fit. And that's usually what happens. I'll let them kind of sleep over overnight and then if they want another pretrial, I will let them come in and we'll do something different. I've had that happen before and the bride is the most important aspect and if she's unhappy with the look, then what is the point? You know what I mean? She is the star of the whole show. So I've had brides that come in and do a couple of pretrials until she is happy and that's what matters to me. I want the bride to be happy. I want the bride to feel confident. That is usually a girl's most special day and I definitely don't want to ruin that by her being unhappy with her makeup. So I applied the two colors and um, I am blending them out still and I'm gonna add a touch of this kind of brown shade down here. So this is Swiss Chocolate by MAC, and wow, I, died. <laughs> I broke that shot out, okay. And let's see, I'm going to go in with a smaller, more defined brush like this, and I'm going to dip into this and really make sure to um, put this right where I want it. So I'm just going to do the outer edge here. If you're doing your own makeup for your wedding and you don't really do much makeup, you are going to want to practice this in different techniques. Everyone has a different eye shape, so what I'm doing here might not look the best for you. You might want to kind of like pull it out and lift your eye a little bit. Um, I have kind of big and round eyes, um, so I like to kind of keep it snug to um, what my actual eye is. Uh, I'm gonna go and dip this in the crease a tiny bit and then I'm gonna go back into this other brush and you just want to do all these steps and do your best honestly because this really just comes together at the end when the lashes are on and um, everything is really complete because right now you might look at it and be like oh my god what is this I don't want to wear this on my wedding day but it's going to look really nice once the shimmer is on the lid, once the lashes are applied. Now, generally, I don't do winged liner for brides unless they really request it. I think we've gone through so many different trends with eyeliner that if you're trying to do a very classic, timeless look, eyeliner is not necessarily the best option. I like to define the lash line. I don't just leave it bare, but I don't usually... Um, suggest eyeliner unless they really want it. So next what I'm going to do is apply a shimmer shade. Now usually my favorite is going to be this. It This is Grandstand by uh, Makeup Geek as well and I just love this color. So I'm going to grab it on a flat brush like this, spray a little bit of setting spray on it and apply that to my lip. I just think this shade is like the perfect pizzazz to a look without being overbearing and taking away from the eye. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little definer brush like this. And I have a, um, it just depends on what I feel like doing. Sometimes I'll go in with like a deep color like this. Um, this is called MAC Handwritten. And I'm just going to go right by my lash line and just kind of stamp this to create a little bit of depth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Pencil in Whiskey. And I'm just going to um, get really close to my mirror and kind of tight line the upper lash line. And just a tiny bit. And I'm going to go back in with this little fluffy brush. 
It's gonna go and kind of buff this out. We'll just smoke it out and set everything in place and kind of blend that um, that shadow that I put there and then that liner together and it just creates this like super like blown out definition to the eye which is really really nice and and timeless so now that that is done i like the eye so i'm gonna move on to my face that, now that everything has kind of sunk into my face i'm gonna move on to the foundation now this is my ride or die bride foundation this is the estee lauder double wear um i love this foundation i recommend it to everyone it is super lightweight the coverage is so nice and buildable so if there's no acne i can just kind of blur out the face if there's a little bit of blemishes i can cover it really well with this without appearing very very cakey i'm like on my last drop so this is why i'm doing this i was saving it for this video and oh it's just such a nice formula it's so thin and it's so natural on the skin you don't have to overset it for it to stay so you don't end up looking very, very cakey or anything like that. It's just literally the perfect foundation. And this is also really nice because it has a lot of coverage, but it also still, I'm able to, um, like on me, I'm able to get it to a very nice coverage where I need it. But then on my nose area, I can still sheer it out and make my freckles peep through. And it blends out so nice and you can't feel this on the skin at all, which is amazing for the people that really don't wear any makeup and they, you know, when you don't wear any makeup, or even for me, someone who wears makeup all the time, when the foundation feels super cakey on the face, it just makes me feel so uncomfortable and I want nothing to do with that. So this is truly an incredible foundation when it comes to both people who wear makeup a lot and people who don't wear makeup a lot. Like, look at the finish on this. Oh, it's like not too matte. It's not too dewy. It's just so good. I'm gonna let this kind of sit on the face. I'm gonna do my other eye and um, I'll meet you back here in like two seconds. So now that both of my eyeballs are done, now it's time to go ahead and use some concealer. I use the Tarte Shape Tape for this. And I don't go overboard. I do kind of a couple swipes under the eyes a couple of swipes on the forehead and on the chin and then I will also use the beauty blender to blend this out and when I do that I kind of use it to clean up underneath the eyeshadow um, just to make it similar for me like I said I have two very different shaped eyes so this is very important when it comes to making sure that they at least look like they're you know cousins not like distance 13 removed and an uncle you know I don't know and then I will go ahead and use my setting powder to set the whole face underneath the eyes I'll use a little sponge and then any areas where they have told me they're oily I will use the sponge and then everywhere else I'll use like a big fluffy brush and I'll just kind of dab it at first and then I'll buff it away. This foundation is so nice because I don't have to overset it. Then I'll go in with kind of, um, like I use this to like bronze up. So this is the Marc Jacobs um, contour, but I'll use this big brush and I'll kind of dust this all over. This is a really nice shade to kind of make sure that I'm kind of warming up the face just a tiny bit without making it orange, which is really nice. And I feel like this gives like a nice little like flawless type of look to the skin. And then I'll go in and use my Kat Von D shade and light contour. And I'm going to go in to kind of a mixture of all these three shades and sculpt out the cheeks. I don't do very much contouring, but I do like to sculpt the face and make it look really nice. And then I'll go into the darkest shade and I'll do just a dash, which kind of makes like a really nice gradient. And then I'll take the big brush and I'll dip into all three and I'll kind of just dust this underneath the chin to bring back a little bit of color and kind of slim down the face a little bit and I'll do the same on the upper 
like temple area. Then I'll kind of blend this out a little bit too. Um, and then I will go ahead and keep this out because if I have any blemishes, I'll go ahead and touch that up in a tiny little bit. Next, what I want to do is I want to finish up underneath the eyes. So first, I'm going to take a flat definer brush that we use to kind of define the lash line. And I'm going to go in just a tiny bit into this dark color again. Put that, you know, tap the excess away. And I'm just going to pat this really close to the lash line, kind of like a third of the way from the outer corner moving in towards the inner. I'm just going to pat this in here and kind of connect my lower and upper lash. And then I'm going to use this brush right here and dip into these two colors up here. Tap away the excess and I'm going to blend this whole lash line. I'm going to take this, which was the blender up at the top, and I'm just going to, with no excess product, just fluff out this outer edge. And now I need to move on to the eyebrows. Now for the eyebrows, usually what I do is use a pencil. So first of all, I'm just going to use a brush to fluff out the brows. And for the brows, I usually fill in what they already have unless they specifically requested that I go ahead and like create a full brow, which some of them have done. But I will be using an Anastasia Beverly Hills um, pencil. This is the Brow Wiz. For me, I'm using it in a dark brown. So I really just like to fill in the sparse areas. And if you are doing this yourself for brows, I like to more so work from... A further distance it's so much more important to look at the full picture than it is to just really focus on like a very specific area on the brow doing it from far away kind of makes makes the job of looking natural so much easier and sometimes if I'm trying to make my brows look really really natural I'll kind of hold it like really far down on the brush just to make sure that my strokes are really nice and light and when you get them to looking like at least as close as possible. Then I'm going to go in and set it with the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. And I like to push mine out and make them look fluffy. This is amazing to make sure that the brows stay in place. And before I go and do anything else, I'm going to make sure to hydrate my lips. It doesn't matter what you use as long as you just put a little bit of some kind of balm on to smooth them out a little bit. And make sure that they're not cracked and crusty. And then I'm going to take a little flat brush and I'm going to go back into my shade and contour and I'm going to go into the lighter shades in here and spot conceal. I'm going to get this little bitch down here. Then I'm just kind of going to brighten up this underneath of the eye. Just a tiny little bit and then I'm gonna go and take this brush here and I'm gonna go into this shade right here and kind of contour my nose a tiny bit and for me it's not necessarily a skinnier nose it's like a less bumpy nose I guess if you will and I'm just gonna round out this and I'm gonna like wipe away any product on my hand and I'm gonna go into the light colors and just kind of dab this around the edges of my nose and then kind of bring this up here and down the bridge kind of smooth everything out and I do it around the nose because as a female this is kind of where you get a little bit hormonal and this is where redness tends to break out so I like to kind of stop that right there and then then what I am gonna go and do is spray some some setting spray on my face this is the Urban Decay let that kind of sink in but while that is happening I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna go into my highlighter and usually what I love to use on brides is champagne pop it's a very universal shade and I'm just dipping my sponge and going right on the points of my cheek a little bit on my nose and doing it while the face is wet helps and then I'm gonna go in and wet my sponge with a little bit of different setting spray and just kind of pounce this right on top to really mush 
that highlight in and make it look very very nice and natural so that is all that I'm gonna do for the face right now very rarely do I apply blush unless the bride wants some um, then I'm gonna go back into this brush here and I'm gonna dip into this shade here this is a makeup geek shade as well it's called Rapunzel and I'm just gonna dab this right in the inner corner here and right underneath the brow just a tiny little bit this will open up the eye and this will kind of draw up your eye a little bit or if you want even bigger eyes what you can do is apply a little bit of white liner in the waterline underneath this gives even a bigger eye effect. I'm done with eyeshadows. So now what you want to do is apply some false lashes. These are my favorite. These are the Demi Wispies by Ardell. They give enough definition, but they're not overbearing. They are not heavy. They have a very thin and clear band, so this is not going to weigh down your eyes. This is not going to make your eyes water or anything like that. So I think these are perfect for brides, especially for brides that never wear eyelashes. They just don't feel like they're even on your eye and I think that's the most beautiful thing about them is that they're just so comfortable and they add just the right touch of oomph and kind of pull the whole look together. So I'm going to go apply these off camera and I will be right back. And then for mascara, what I use is the Better Than Sex Waterproof Mascara. Obviously, brides might be crying, might be laughing tears of joy, or, you know, just sweating. So it's really, really important to use a good waterproof mascara and this Better Than Sex Mascara is bomb. And I like to use the mascara after the lashes are already on so that it really does a good job of blending the two together and kind of really making sure that they're really on nice and snug and secure. So for a lot of my weddings, I'll bring this baby right here. So this is my Anastasia Beverly Hills um, lip palette and I'm able to mix any color that I want with this. What I do recommend for brides is to purchase the same lipstick that we are using and if they don't want to do that then I'll go ahead and use this because this is very comfortable and a long wearing formula and a lot of people are not going to want to wear a kind of drying formula that comes with using liquid lipsticks so I think that's a um a very good solution if they don't want to buy their own set but if they're willing to buy their own set that I will use something like a MAC lip liner and a MAC lipstick those are very nice and long wearing and if they buy it for themselves they can just reapply it after dinner or whenever they want um, so that is the one thing that I recommend for brides to buy just because lipstick is something that's gonna come off you're gonna be kissing you're gonna be talking you're going to be drinking and eating and doing all these different things that there's just no formula that's ever going to stay on put and I feel like MAC is also something that they can continue using afterwards. They're not going to want to throw it away so that's definitely something that I do recommend but if they don't want to buy it then I will just use this palette. Um, it's very long wearing and I'll do a nude color so that when they do start to um, kind of lose a little bit of the lipstick, it won't really be like this noticeable difference. So I'm going to go in today and use this color right here. I guess I'm just going to point it. This is the shade 11. That's what it says on the back. So I'm just going to go and apply this on my lips. And then once my lipstick is on, I will go ahead and do another spray down with the setting spray just to make sure that things are really nice and coherent and really synced together and the skin is not looking powdery or dry or anything like that. And then what you can also do is just kind of use this little sponge that you used to blend everything on your face to really push all the products together and make sure that everything is looking really really nice and like skin like and flawless and just so so beautiful and so so radiant. So as you can see, I did my hair and this is the completed look and like I've mentioned a million times before, it just looks so good and so natural and so flawless and just like it's your skin and like it's your face, it's just that little oomph in certain areas to really enhance your eyes, your cheeks, your lips, to enhance your eyelashes a little bit and it just makes you look really nice and really put together and it's going to make you feel super super confident and beautiful and you're just gonna glow. You're first of all glowing from within, but this is also going to make you glow and have that bridle on you. It's not super smoky, but it's just enough to 
like draw to your eyes and to make them like sultry and nice and it's neutral colors but it still has like a touch of pink for that femininity and just like oh this look is everything and I'm so happy the way that it came out and this is exactly what I wanted to showcase in this video so I hope that you really really love this video I hope that this helps you if you have any questions please make sure to leave them down below for me or send me a DM on Instagram I'll be make sure to answer it all products will be listed down below and yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this. Go ahead and smash the like for this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.